Hi. Well, welcome aboard the Nostalgia Train. I'll get to you guys in a sec. Natsuki's kind of scolding me right now. I think she thinks I was looking up her skirt or something. What are you looking at? Hey, oh, jeez. Um... You're trying to look at my... my... No. Natsuki's legs shake. I, I'm not. I was just... Natsuki, don't try to move. Just give me the box. You, you perv! I am not! You set me up! How? How is that? You're the one who asked me to do that. Go away! Get out! But... I'll do it myself. Uh-huh! The chair suddenly swivels beneath Natsuki's feet. Okay. I guess Natsuki's done scolding me. How's it going, everyone? I'm Nostalgic Dave, and welcome back aboard the Nostalgia Train. That was a rough start. <laughs> Natsuki! Ah! The scene turns to chaos in a split second. The chair flies from under Natsuki's feet. Frantically, I try to catch her. The box topples out of her hands, and the, bo the books go flying. I got you. Crash. She probably landed on top of me, didn't she? The full force of Natsuki's body against me throws me to the ground. Yep. <laughs> A whole bunch of books pelt me in the face. Natsuki tries to shield herself with her own arms as her face lands straight on my chest. Cool. Ugh. My right arm and my back seriously felt the impact. Ooh, okay, you're close. You're very, very, very close. Hi. Then again, that's probably simulating that you're right on top of me, so. Ugh. Slowly, Natsuki comes up to her senses. Ugh. She presses her arms straight into me to prop herself up. Huh? Natsuki seems to realize that it's not the floor that's beneath her. <laughs> gross! Gross! Ugh. Fist pounds into my chest. Ow! Sheesh, Natsuki, you assume too much. <laughs> Natsuki then hoists herself to her feet. What were you thinking? You sick owl? I was thinking I was trying to make sure you didn't hurt yourself. I feel like you okay over that. I heard a lot of noise. Monica suddenly press in. Monica! See what happens. See what happens when you put the manga on the top shelf. Are you trying to kill your club members or something? Falling on the floor ain't gonna kill you, Natsuki. Gee! S sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, and one more thing. Seems like your most recent club member is a total purr. Uh. So I hope you're happy. I didn't. Somehow it's impossible for me to explain this whole bizarre situation to Monica. I didn't do anything, I swear. I know, right? No, don't worry. Oh boy. Ugh. Monica says that quietly to me. She's like whispering this. Don't worry. I know Natsuki's over exaggerating. <laughs> uh. Okay. Oh no! What? My. Eh? I look down. Natsuki is kneeling on the floor holding one of the books that are scattered all over. There's a large diagonal crease along the page that she's desperately trying to smooth out. Oh, it's one of these situations. 
Yeah, I used to do that to books that I used to read. Nowadays, that just bothers me. <sighs> it must have landed on the page. Natsuki tries a bit more to fix the crease, but she can't get it out. Suddenly, she gives up and slams the book shut, then throws it to the floor. Instead of continuing to yell, she just lowers her head. <laughs> oh boy. Natsuki, are you... No! <laughs> Natsuki's voice squeaks. Oh boy. You see tears on her face. I'll help get the crease out, okay? Partially my fault, so... Natsuki shakes her head, still looking down. No. I don't even, ca I don't even care that much. I'm just having a really bad day today. Oh no. Natsuki sobs again. I didn't mean to take it out on you. I didn't mean to. It's... It, it, it's fine. Is there anything you want to talk about? Oh, by the way, for those who didn't notice, I lowered the volume on this because I realized how you're supposed to do that. I'm stupid. <laughs> Natsuki shakes her head. Natsuki's an introvert, isn't she? Just... Every day is so hard. I just want to come to the club and... Natsuki falls silent again. I can't press her. So I can only do what I know how to do. Alright. Well, I'll clean this up. I'll move the rest of your manga for you. Ah, wait, what kind of ah is that? I don't know how to do that sound effect if I don't know what it's resembling. I pick up volume two of the Parfait Girls. We'll set this one aside. This will help cheer you up a bit, right? We can get started on it once I'm done here. Natsuki looks up with her glossy eyes. Her lips quiver. Oh boy. You're... You're really nice to me. Eh? This sounds really strange, coming from Natsuki. I didn't expect it at all. I did. <laughs> but not for the reason people might think. Well... I'm just treating you like a friend, you know? Natsuki lowers her head and stifles another sob. Not sure what happened to her today. Being nice is the least I could do. Yeah, <laughs> I can concur with that one, buddy. The next couple minutes are silent between us as I begin gathering in the scattered books. I make sure to slip them into the box in their correct order. After a little bit, Natsuki starts helping. It isn't long before we're done, and I hoist the box onto the shelf, where Natsuki wanted to put it. Then, I get on the stool and quickly finish moving the rest of her books from the top shelf. <sighs> Alright, that should do it. I hop off the stool. Natsuki averts her gaze. Thanks. It's, it's nothing. Natsuki is holding the volume I set aside in her hands. Alright, I'm ready. Good. Even if you weren't, I make it to it anyway. <laughs> well, I mean, I kind of offered it, so that'd be kind of pointless, you know. Also, Natsuki? Hold on. Okay, I have to read this from a very weird angle to be able to actually see Natsuki's mouth. Can you guys see it? Because I can't. Maybe? Wait. Nope, 
Yeah, no matter what I do, the only way I can see it is if I look at the screen that I'm looking at from an angle. It's really weird. Natsuki, where's your mouth? <laughs> Even if you weren't, I make you do it anyway. I'm taking responsibility for what you said. Think about cheering me up. If you insist. We sit in the same spot as last time, and I open the second volume. Natsuki's mood quickly improves, laughing and pointing things out to me. She's surprisingly sharp, making note of a lot of subtle repeated jokes and background elements. <laughs> in the end, I'm pretty impressed by how everything ties together in this manga. I guess Natsuki has good taste after all. After some time, Monica gets our attention as usual, and it's time to share poems again. Guess I'll be holding on to this for now. Yep. Er, uh, wait, who said guess I'll be holding? I feel like I read that wrong. Me, I said that. I talk like a girl, apparently. <laughs> Oops. Even you sound more enthusiastic this time. Well, I'm starting to get into it, you know? <laughs> okay, there's the mouth. Kind of blurred out and brightened, but there it is. Told you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I return to my seat and slip the book into my bag. Who should I share the poem with first? Natsuki, of course! Natsuki reads my poem. She keeps glancing at me, then back at the poem. By now, she must have read it more than once. I think she likes it. <laughs> Is that bad? Is it that bad? No, no it's not. It's good, it's really good, okay? There, I said it! Ugh! This wasn't supposed to happen at all! Even after you and I literally just had like a good time reading, reading manga together? Are you okay? Oh, who am I kidding? No, you're not. That's kind of a more serious no, you're not, though. Why can't you just be better than that? Hey! My poems are supposed to impress you, not the other way around. Why can't it go both ways? You're trying to impress me? Obviously! You think I'd let you enjoy Yuri's writing more than mine? Give me a break! Well, in that case... What's the problem with me trying to impress you? I'll tell you. you... Uh... Natsuki's face freezes. Like she just realized something. The 80% of the time you got no mouth? You... You're trying to impress me? Apparently. <laughs> Natsuki vigorously scans her eyes over my poem one more time. Then, the poem slips out of her hands and flutters to the floor. <laughs> hey, I have to use the bathroom. Okay, bye! Uh, mm, mm. Red faced, Natsuki quickly walks out of the room. Hey, Pink Fox. Did you do something to Natsuki? No! It may be, but it's not something bad. I just saw her rush out like that. You didn't do anything terrible, did you? Read the poem. Actually, wait your turn. No. I just told her that my voice gets caught in my throat. 
There's no way I can tell Monica that I'm trying to impress Natsuki. Probably a good idea. Hmm? Monica sees the poem lying on the floor and swiftly picks it up. She reads through it, her smile not fading from her face. I see. You wrote this for Natsuki, didn't you? I, I mean, not really. Oh, BS, Pink Fox. Me. BS me. <laughs> In fact, didn't she like your poem a lot the other day, too? Oh boy, you're catching on. Uh oh. I'm surprised you know her taste so well already. Are you sure you're not cheating, Pink? Cheating? What do you mean by that? I don't have a girlfriend. Not in the game, at least. Never mind, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I can see you kidding for one reason. Literature Club last time kind of said that they, 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 they were asking Monica if she was spending time with her boyfriend, and I mean, she looks at my character just implying that that was my character. I'm like, no! <laughs> as much as my character seems to want that, and all three of the other girls... Understands. Also, Monica, where's your mouth? I just realized this too. Where's your mouth, Monica? Why do all the girls not have mouths? Or, or maybe it's just me. Maybe it's the angle I'm looking at. I don't know. I'll probably rewatch this on a device and see the mouths then. It's funnier though to say say the idea that the girls just hold on. I'm trying to see, like, the other... Yeah, it doesn't even look like it. Do they? Does it look like it? I don't know. Now I gotta look this up. Ugh. Yeah, I was wrong. It's just me. I am blind to mouths. I cannot see mouths. Where are the mouths? I didn't understand Monica's jokes at all. Anyway. How do you think Natsuki feels about you? Uh, I'm pretty sure she's starting to get into me. <laughs> oh, you don't need to answer that. I was, it was just something for you to think about. Why? Hey! Natsuki comes up and snatches the poem out of Monica's hand. Neither of us had noticed her re-enter the classroom. Did you read this, Monica? Of course. I liked it. Ugh! You should really stop reading things that aren't for you, you know? I have a bad habit of doing that. Huh? But Pink Fox wrote this poem. And we're supposed to share with everyone, right? Yeah. Uh, hey, tell you what, Nazi. You can have it afterwards. Ugh. Natsuki freezes. She apparently forgot that my poem is technically for everyone to read. Okay, well, I think Pink Fox is done sharing this poem with everyone. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's not like anyone would want to read this anyway. I'm just going to hold on to this. If you insist. Oops. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Like what? Never mind. Uh, Natsuki? I'll give- Tell you what, I'll give you the poem, but that's still not very fair to Sayori. She hasn't gotten to read it yet. So what? Well, I guess Big Fox is right, Natsuki. It's not fair if you don't let everyone finish reading it. <sighs> Fine. Natsuki returns my poem. Not like she's going to like it, though. Anyway, be my poem now. And no, I won't let you keep it. This is my only copy. Oh, uh, okay. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. 
Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. That's random. Okay. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Again, really random. <laughs> One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. Try not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm going to tell everyone. That's really random. Is this about somebody in the school or something? No mouth! That yeah, probably is, I just don't see it. <laughs> Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. This place was way too short. I was just warming up. Hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, message is pretty straightforward in this poem. That Amy does not like spiders. Or that you don't like spiders and that Amy does and you don't like Amy because of that. Oh my gosh, my brain. I thought I'd have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogy. It helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like, anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course. It's about how everyone thinks my... It doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I heard it to be easy and re to relate to. Understandable. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out, they make fun of you or think less of you. That just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes? As long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking on weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. I don't know how I feel about that. And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. You know, I'm glad that you can appreciate this kind of writing. I mean, I know I was talking about that yesterday. But I've been, well, I've been enjoying sharing my writing with you, so, so consider yourself lucky, okay? Oh, jeez, all right. <laughs> well, thanks for being honest. What's that supposed to mean? I'm always honest. Gee! Look forward to tomorrow, too, okay? All right, I will. Time to see another person without a mouth. Hi, Sayori. Ooh! I like this one, Pink Boss. I don't even remember the voice. At this point, I'm just going off the fly. <laughs> you have no mouth, neither. You got a red bump, but that's about it. Oh, that's the mouth. Oh. That's some nice feeling, isn't it? I'm glad. Still, though, your toe makes it sound like you liked yesterday's poem better. <laughs> I guess you caught me. Sometimes you know me a little too well for my own good. Sayori. Well, don't just try to be nice about it. If I'm doing a bad job, then I'd rather just hear it. No, no! I still like this one, I promise. You know I wouldn't lie to you, Pink Fox. Never ever. I don't like where this is going. 
Yeah, I guess so. What made yesterday's poem so great compared to this one, then? Um... Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. That's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah! What? Me neither. Okay, you're lying there. Ugh. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Oh, you wanna write something for me? Oh, That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. I've heard that statement before. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Ooh. Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. That expression says otherwise, not, uh, Sayori. Uh, great, I've been talking to Natsuki so much that I'm calling you that. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. Guess I like happy poem. Well, I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. Oh, for the love of Pete. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Okay. Bittersweet poems? Okay. I can think of a, I can think of a few poems that I've written that you might like then. Yeah! I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad. I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Then you're blind as a bat. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug. How does this guy not understand what's going on here? You make a nice, happy rainbow. Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Eh? It is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Big Fox. I should go write that down then. Wait, was that Sayori or me? At this point, I'm not even paying attention anymore. I'm so focused on the fact that she... No, yeah, that was Sayori. Okay. I'm so focused on the fact that there are no mal... I mean, that I don't see any mouths that, uh... Well, I thought that was Sayori, and it was, but then I thought it was me, so I don't know. You can read my poem now, okay? Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. I already don't like this. I read the first line, I'm like, what? It's the secret place where I keep all my dream. Oh, we're talking about the brain. Okay. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. There's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles, all in a row. My collection makes up me a lots, my collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies, digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done. 
I open up and in come my friends. In they come, in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. Every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile, the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, in shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 inside my head. Sayori? Uh, knowing poetry, Sayori, you're hiding something. I mean, I knew that already, but... Holy crap. Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. Oh, no. Monica! And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. Oh, no. I see that. That was kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. No, you're not. The point is, it came out good. So you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. You're hiding something. I mean, I knew that already, but... How is my character so stupid to not see this? I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing is the best! And now she's hiding it again. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Okay. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Sayori's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes making makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Yeah! Alright, Yuri next. Um... Are you still mad at me? Eh? For disrespecting Natsuki yesterday? Because reading this poem, now I know why you got mad at me. Because you... You prefer her writing over mine. That's not really true. Meaning when I disrespected her, I disrespected you too, didn't I? Oh no. Oh boy. Yuri, you might be reading into this a little bit too much. How could I be so stupid? I always let these things happen. Whenever I think me or I speak, I just come off as awkward and unlikable. But if I speak without me thinking, the things I want to keep in sight come out and pe make people hate me. So please don't force yourself to be around me. I know this is what Monica wants, but it's not fair to you when you could be enjoying your time with Natsuki and Sayori. Yuri. Please, it makes it easier for me if you don't express any concern. Besides, I have my books with me. That's all I need. And now you sound depressed. Yuri smiles sadly puts her head down on her desk. I'm frustrated. I don't hate her, but
but it's as if she's not capable of listening to me over and her own thoughts. I sigh to myself. All I can do is accept that that's how she is. If she wants to be left alone, then I have no choice but to abide to that request. Who should I show my poem to? Well, there's only one other option. Again, there's a red lump and not a... Oh, that's a mouth, right. Hi again, Pink Fox. That was kind of silly to ask you earlier, wasn't it? Um, sure. I'm glad the two of you have been getting along so well. That's one way of putting it. Anyway, I already read your poem, but you can go ahead and read mine now. I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Save me. Oh boy. This is just about as dark as Natsuki's already. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacop cac oh gosh, cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Uh. Load me. What the heck? Wait. What? A meaningless what? Noise, I'm assuming? Monica. It's even more abstract than your last one. Huh. <laughs> I guess it's the way, just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just a kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. And now I can't see your mouth again. I am very blind to mouths. I've said this before, I'll say it again. I am blind to mouths. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling. Or a conversation with the reader. No! <laughs> so putting it this way, putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway... Here's Monica's writing tip of the day! Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your- Excuse me? Monica? No breaking the fourth wall today, please! I'm not ready for this! <laughs> you never know when you might change your mind. I mean... For heaven's sake. That's why this is here and these two are separated. Then when I finish them, they're going in this section. I know this, Monica. Welcome to a let's play. Oh, when something unexpected may happen. Wait. Is this still peeking about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. 
Thanks for listening. Bad, Monica. Bad. No. Okay. I'm done here. We're done. I'm not going into the fourth wall breaking section yet. <sighs> we'll continue this next time. Probably won't be seeing Pink Fox for a little while just because... Well, we'll probably start seeing her either next time or the time after. Since she does work nights, she's usually sleeping through the day. That's why she's not here right now. Amber probably will be joining. She said she'll start frequently, more frequently joining in on this once she starts doing day shifts. Because she is uh, transitioning over to that. For right now, though, we're going to end this episode of Doki Doki Literature Club here. So thank you guys so much for watching this episode. If you liked it, push that like button and so far you can't see it anymore. And if you really liked it, consider subscribing to the channel. Hopefully next time I'll be able to see their mouths a bit better. Um... Want to check out any other visual novel that I had? I think I really only have a list of one right now. Two, three, I don't even know anymore. But if you want to check out the other stuff that I've done like that, uh, click the link down there, try and take you to that destination. Or if you want to check out any of the rides, uh, I need to stop on this location. Click the link across my head, try to get there. However, this train is off to its next destination, but we hope to catch you guys in another ride. Bye.